A minor injury led to a series of unfortunate events that created a national and worldwide disaster. A cook accidentally chopped off his two fingertips, which led to unimaginable devastation, resulting in the loss of 22 lives, an entire oil rig destroyed, and multi-millions of dollars lost. How did such a minor incident lead to one of the world's most significant oil disasters? Welcome to Facts Fanatics, where we provide bizarre and exciting stories from the past that intrigue and inspire you. Today, we will share an unbelievable incident where a minor injury led to a chain of unfortunate events that caused a national disaster. Please give a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can share more of these stories with you. The Mumbai High Basin, located in the Arabian Sea, is India's most significant hydrocarbon reserve for oil and gas drilling and production. Since its discovery in 1974, it has been the largest oil producer in the country, with more than 551 oil wells and 33 gas wells. It has produced approximately 15% of India's oil production in 2005. On the 27th of July 2005, the Samudra Suraksha, a 100-meter-long multi-purpose supply ship, busily carried out its routine tasks supplying the oil rigs in the Arabian Sea. Usually, these vessels can only go near the oil platforms and gas wells during normal weather conditions. That day, however, was different, due to an unfortunate accident involving one cook who accidentally sliced off both fingertips while cooking. Though his injuries weren't life-threatening, everything changed for everyone aboard the ship and at the oil platforms as they tried to transport the cook from ship to land. Unfortunately, due to the unexpected weather conditions such as rain drumming on metal and high winds causing the ship to rock uncontrollably, helicopters could not land on the ship's heliport. The crew decided to transfer their injured colleague to an oil platform using the ship's man-riding basket for medical treatment. The Suraksha moved slowly and carefully towards the oil platform. The injured cook was safely tucked in the basket, ready to be transported. Usually, the crew would use computerized assisted thrusters to maneuver, but the computers were experiencing problems that day. The team decided to operate using manual or joystick controls in emergency mode. At first, everything seemed okay. The crew member was successfully transferred to the platform, and the crew heaved a sigh of relief after completing their task despite the lousy weather. Now all they had to do was exit the platform. Suddenly, a large swell caused the Shiraksa's helideck to crash into the platform's risers. The damage to the riser immediately caused a sudden and rapid release of high-pressure gas. This caused the riser to break, and oil started gushing. Next, the oil caught fire, and that high-pressure gas erupted into a massive ball of flame. Despite the heroic efforts of the crew of the platform to slow the onslaught of fire, the oil platform melted and sunk in a matter of a couple of hours, taking with it the supply ship Samudra Saraksha. Unfortunately, the Saraksha and the oil platform were not the only victims of this blaze. The fire rapidly escalated to the other risers on the platforms as they were close to each other, with no fire protection protocols in place. The resulting blaze leapt across one of the bridges and took out the next oil rig, the noble Charlie Yester rig, like dominoes falling in a fiery sky. What followed were explosions on an unprecedented scale. The explosions consumed almost everything in sight. Within two hours, India's oil industry flagship, with numerous oil and gas wells providing energy to the country's masses, turned into mounds of ugly, molten metal. With the unbearable smoke, the workers were left with no place to go. Caught amidst the sudden catastrophe, they found themselves in the middle of the ocean, paralyzed with the fear of death approaching any minute by drowning or fire. A total of 362 members were pulled out of the calamity-hit zone. The survivors of the disaster had their own horror stories to share. An engineer aboard the Samudra Saraksha P.K. Mishra witnessed the disaster. It all happened so suddenly, he explained. The magnitude of the blazing fire was so intense that the idea of using the lifeboats didn't cross their minds. He explained, I was drinking tea with some colleagues when we heard an explosion. Then we saw fire. 
My colleagues and I grabbed the life jackets, climbed down a ladder, jumped into the sea, and swam really hard to get away from the platform. He added that the crew started jumping right off the vessel into the ocean for more than 35 feet. He remembers floating with other members in the turbulent waters of the sea in darkness for five hours before they were rescued. He kept saying, I cannot believe I am alive. Another eyewitness and engineer, Manohar Koshi, saw the Samudra Saraksha hit the legs of the platform. He witnessed the swaying and tossing around in the turbulent waters, and his blood ran cold when it hit the platform. He was sure there was no way they could survive this. We did not seem to have a chance, he said. Koshi was among the lucky ones who got hold of a lifeboat and rowed to safety, fighting the angry waves on the way. He explained, we struggled in the lifeboats for an hour, and then we were in the open sea. Koshi claims that the platform went down within the first 15 minutes of the explosion. The disaster caused enormous oil spills and halted the production of around 120,000 oil barrels and 4.4 million cubic meters of gas per day. Subir Raha, chairman and managing director of Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, explained, In terms of loss of property, this has been the most serious accident in our history claiming the oil platforms as a total loss. It cost over $300 million to repair the damage, and the operations were halted for over four months. Though the economic losses are measurable and replaceable, the lives lost during this unfortunate event devastated 22 families. 22 brothers, fathers, and sons were lost to the sea and fire, never to come home. The planet and the ocean also become victims of this tragedy. The oil spilled into the Arabian Sea, caused the environment and marine life to be irreparably damaged. The total cost to sea life and the environment has still not been fully calculated almost 20 years later. Accident or Gross Negligence Investigators later found the prime cause of the accident, as claimed by the oil company's officials, were poor weather conditions, heavy wind thrusts, and high tides. However, other than what the ONGC officials claimed, there were multiple other factors. Human error in predicting the weather conditions contributed to this problem. Moreover, engineers on board the platform could have waved off the incoming Suraksha, but they didn't. The platform was approximately 30 years old at the time, despite a work-life expectancy of only 20 years. The platform's risers containing the lethal gas were installed outside the platform structure instead of inside and were also placed so close to one another that there was no hope of contaminant if a fire broke out. Finally, the government of India needs to bear some responsibility. Unfortunately, when this incident occurred, no regulatory body for offshore safety in oil and gas governance existed in India. And that is how a cook's minor injury led to one of the world's greatest oil disasters. What do you think? Could anything more have been done? Let us know in the comments below. If you like the video and want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button for new updates. Thank you for watching.